An audience member of mine asked me and said, hey, man, I haven't seen or, talk, or heard you talk about the Batman games more recently, especially with the news that just came out that Warner Brothers said they're going to be focusing on the uh, Arkham games, their Mortal Kombat games, and a specific set of games. Now, this is a very interesting and unique situation. Number one, there's a high level of mismanagement and a low level of understanding the customer in Warner Brothers. This video is going to be a little harsh. I'm not going to hold back any punches. So first of all, they make a game called Gotham Knights. The game is not a live service game. They didn't give the game the marketing it needed. They overworked their team, pretty much putting them in a position where they made four player characters in a single player game that's offline and you can play co-op online. Did not give the you know ad um, side of the game and all the communication side the much needed care that was uh, you know necessary to get their game understood. Content creators like Skill Up, White Light, and a bunch of others, uh, Monty Xander, lied about the game. Luke Stevens, they all called this game and talked about the game in a way that they represented the game with things that were not in the game or they thought things were not in the game that were in the game. They couldn't even be bothered. They all wanted to go play PlayStation's God of War at the time. You could tell. And so the game was basically represented as a dumpster fire when the game is actually a decent game for its gameplay loop. Now, yes, writing, story has its you know issues, but that was, in my opinion, a failure from the part of Warner Brothers. They have many failures. I've decided to kind of walk away from, you know, for the meantime, from even speaking about anything they're doing because I will only sound harsh. Then they unveiled Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This is where I also want to criticize the fans of the superhero games on the DC side because there are a few of us that actually cover this thing dedicatedly. And I remember that time I told many of them, I said, y'all are not going to like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League because it's actually a live service game. It's a shooter. It's actually not going to feature this melee combat that y'all are dreaming about. And here are the things. I have at least maybe 300 Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League videos. I, you know, guys, y'all know I pump videos out. So I made sure that we covered as many angles of this stuff was, but the fans don't listen. <laughs> they don't, they don't listen. They don't want to hear anything. Like if it's not in their little purview, they are not dealing with it. And you, who is the messenger, will get dragged. So what I've decided to do is just keep them quiet. Let Warner Brothers either crash and burn or let them figure it out and let them make something sensible. It's that simple. I created the Video Game Fight School channel because they said that they were making another game in the Batman universe, which ended up being Gotham Knights. That's essentially why I created the, you know, the channel. Then Mortal Kombat 11 was also announced, and I was like, yeah, I'll be able to play a fighting game a little bit. But that didn't work out. YouTube started demonetizing Mortal Kombat 11 videos because of the extreme violence that they saw depicted. So I was like, I'm not even going to bother with this. So when you think about all of this and you put it in perspective, there's a lot to actually put out here. Number one, the person in charge of Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, Zaslav, said that he wanted to take his game's live service like Ubisoft. He was gung-ho about doing it that way. Well, that has not panned out for many games. There are some games that can do live service and some cannot. Even the ones that are doing live service are many of their fighting titles like Mortal Kombat, but they don't follow up and support the game like Street Fighter does. If you notice, Street Fighter has an edge where its games stay relevant for a very long time. But instead of actually allowing for you know people to be able to get their games supported, they pretty much would just make it, abandon it on the competitive scene. When casuals buy it and hardcore players complain about it, they'll walk away from their project. There's much left to be desired with their management in the Warner Brothers side of their IPs. And this is where the frustration comes in. We can sit here and talk all day. They have all of these characters. They have Flash, Superman, Wonder Woman game we haven't heard anything about. Monolith finally changed their website to represent Wonder Woman. But again, who is making the game? Who is writing the game? We've seen all these games being written by activist writers inside of the development studios. Are players going to like it? Is it going to be a good game? Is it going to have solid mechanics? They're talking about the Nemesis system. Some people act like, you know, a development studio is impervious because they have something that, a, you know, another development team handed to them, like the old team that made the Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War franchise. Most of them are no longer in that studio. So, again, you don't even know what it is that you're going to be getting. You don't know if you're going to be getting a passionate design game, a passionately designed game, or you're going to be getting a game that just checks off boxes. So there's just like multiple layers of what's going on. The place where I see that there is, you know, a little bit of uh, interest in Warner Brothers games would be Harry Potter series. The Hogwarts Legacy game 
that game, the fan base and the developers understand care for the product that they're making. And I think this is where the, you know, right now the this the um that's where there, there's a little bit more groundedness. In the case of the Batman games, well, they you know put Stephen Hill on this path to make a live service game. He's made Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. He and Jamie Walker have left the studio. I don't know if there will be anyone in that studio that can actually innovate and bring something fresh. You see, let me just say this. The old school game design, game development philosophy, where those guys and gals, Amy Henning, uh, Stephen Hill, and you know they were bringing in people like Paul Dini to write, and these mavericks in game design, game development, that era is almost fully gone. Jade Raymond, who first helped bring the first Assassin's Creed to light, is now making a live service game. Thankfully, Amy Henning is writing a Marvel Captain America slash Black Panther game. So hopefully we might see some streaks of excellence of her writing capabilities. But a lot of what we're seeing in terms of writing is a joke. The reason I play Gotham Knights, and a lot of people say, but you play Gotham Knights. I saw a comment of somebody trying to roast me. It's because its gameplay loop is actually very good. Its combat is actually very good. You know, it's not for casuals. If you play Sifu, you will like Gotham Knights the way that once you understand those two games, they actually do go hand in hand in their combat sequence. So when they put, you know, Gotham Knights in front of a lot of these reviewers and they did not know what to do with it for them, the time strikes, the perfect dodges, all of those things that you have to actually do with a higher level of skill. It's a skill based game. If, if you're having problems with Gotham Knights combat, then mastery is where you need to work on. And, you know, when I watch a lot of these reviews and I look at them play, I'm like, mm, th this person doesn't know how to play this, this combat. It's not an insult to them. It's just maybe they didn't have enough time to actually go through the learning curve. I mean, I have hundreds of hours of footage can show you how it's done with Robin and Batgirl and a little bit of Nightwing. Some people are good with Red Hood. I mean, it was hard to actually master even Robin himself. And I haven't even mastered Nightwing. I haven't even mastered Batgirl very well. But their combat really opens up when you understand what's going on. And this part of the marketing piece that Warner Bros. did not provide for its, you know, its community and just left Warner Bros. Montreal to pretty much just kind of walk its way through all of this, I think was just a very seriously poor way to represent the game. Then they ended up, you know, letting uh, a lot of those folk who did Gotham Knights go to other studios. So Warner Bros. Montreal right now may not be in the pipeline for development. There's talk that they might be. It's all over the place. The lack of vision and the lack of management is where Warner Brothers right now is struggling. It's not necessarily about what game they're going to make or whatever it is. No, 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 no. That's the small side of it. Games can be made. They have the resources. They have IPs. They have the, you know, systems built. They got everything. The question now is how they're going to actually go about putting all that to work and being, you know, profitable in today's market. And if they don't stay profitable, I guess they have access to this, uh, you know, uh, investor funding forever because they're in debt. Their whole business you know model right now is a debt based business structure. That's all it is. Right. They're just they're just borrowing more and more money. And the execs are just coming there to just take big money. When they fail, they switch them out. They just switch them out. They just switch them out. So if you're expecting anything, you know, decent in the gaming side from this company, if it's not Harry Potter or Hogwarts Legacy under Avalanche Software's management, I don't know if you'll be able to see anything good. Even Nether Realms is flailing with a Mortal Kombat one game. I don't have to. I delete. I've deleted that game multiple times. I was playing lately the past few. Uh, weeks, but the game is just full of gimmicks. I accidentally ran into a professional Mortal Kombat player, and as they were playing, they just quit the game. I, I was like, why did they quit? Because the game just has its own, it's just too many gimmicks for a fighting game. Nothing standardized, you know, and all of this stuff. So, yo, this is what you're going to hear if I talk about this. Complaining, complaining, complaining. Because we don't give in, we've given so many ideas. I made videos on how to make a solid Superman game. And I was telling somebody, I think somebody was saying something in the comment section. I said, yeah, I made it. But then I took those videos down. Why would I give, those, give them that for free? And someone was like, who are you? Who do you think you are that they would bother thinking, you know, listening to you? I'm like, you know, honestly, I hope they don't listen to me. So somebody can actually make an iteration of a superhero game that resonates with the fans. So I took the idea down. And I probably will explore that in my video game that we're making. Because these guys are not worth actually giving our ideas anyways. They don't listen anyways. So we just need to let them do their thing. If it works out for us, fine. If it doesn't, then fine as well. We'll see how the Wonder Woman game goes, though. That's the one I'm looking forward to. I want to know. But for now, I'm just going to be talking about the gaming industry at large. 
until they get their act together in that department. If not, <laughs> I guess maybe we'll check out Wolverine if Wolverine is good. But again, <laughs> Wolverine's doing being done by Insomniac. And uh, from what we saw in the leaks and what people are suspecting, oh, man, it's going to probably go that same direction again. Do you see where we are in the superhero games community? We're kind of screwed, guys. I think we are. <laughs> Peace out.